It slows down busy minds and bodies. It improves concentration and attention. It helps children cope with anxiety and stress. It develops a sense of inner peace and calm. And it wakens children to a sense of oneness with the whole creation. Yes, we did do that one. But, um, I was going to say, Townsville experience. Back in 2005, they ran a project in Townsville, Australia, in the diocese, on meditation in schools. They did 12 schools, they piloted it, they discovered that, in fact, that it was working for them, and they put it right through now. They've introduced Christian meditation in all primary and secondary schools in the diocese. And in 2006, after the pilot program in 2005, Lawrence Freeman, who is now our director, international director, he is a Benedictine as well. He's the director of the World Community for Christian Meditation. And Bishop Putney, who is Council of Diocese Bishop, they launched the program across all the schools. It is now official in their schools, and it is done daily. So and it's, we're getting results out of there, and really it is quite interesting indeed. And here's Bishop Putney's comments on it. Young children have a great openness to the presence of God in their lives and a real readiness for prayer, prayer of the heart. If they are taught when they are young to be still, so that their hearts can be open to the movement of the Spirit, the presence of Jesus, and the embrace of God the Father, they will have a gift which will continue to bring them great blessings throughout their lives. Now we cannot hope to keep all these children within the established church. But if we can give them the gift of meditation where God is with them and they are with their God, that will be a great consolation and comfort for them if they can hang on to that. And it's marvelous. So, continuing on. What did we learn from times well, Feedback from it. Children were calmer. Children could sit still longer. They felt closer to God. They like to meditate and ask for it, and we're more considerate. I wish some people around here were more considerate. We're more considerate <laughs> and more caring, <laughs> and more caring. <laughs> thought at this stage that we could get Jane to come up. Jane is our DRS, and she's going to come up and give a few comments on how she feels it is going in, in Sacred Heart over the past couple of four years, and perhaps she could ask her questions. Save me Anybody who takes my place here, I would clap them. Do you want to stand here? I'll step behind, I think. I'll sit here. We now have in our school our year ones work on a minute or two meditation. Our year twos and threes do five minutes. Our middle school do eight minutes. And our senior school do ten minutes. We do it twice a week. We have set days when we do it. I can't believe it. The children have taken to it. They're so calm. They just automatically do it. I have road patrol on a morning sometimes, so I'll be late back to class. My class are actually meditating. In silence. It is, it's amazing. They know that Thursdays, Fridays, is meditation days, and they come in, they sit down, the children leave it. I don't leave, I don't know about other classrooms, I don't leave my classroom anymore. The children themselves actually leave it. We have CDs with the um, gongs that go off to start it and, and finish meditation time so it's all timed. The children have cards with the words on that have to be said with the gongs. The children sit with the cards, the children say it. It's, it's such peaceful time in the whole school and we had parents in and Hugh did an information night to the parents so a lot of the parents went off sort of knowing what their children were doing because at first there was a little bit of sort of confusion as to whether we were um, um <laughs> and parents were a bit sort of confused about what we decided to do in the classroom so we informed the parents we've taken that meditation now and it's part of all of our masses and all of our liturgies we have a two-minute meditation, a whole school meditation. Right. Thank you for that. Jane, that's great. It's your turn, right. Let's have another one. Oh, yes, look. This is what you want to get to. Right? This is what we are going to end up with. But what have I got written next? Don't panic. Don't panic. Meditation is simple. 
one that will not involve you in extra work. No. The beginning, yes, but after that it works on its own. As Jane said, the kids do it themselves. The children within a few weeks will be able to run your meditation for you. I have I established a framework of the CDs and the cards because I felt the teachers needed something to framework their meditation, and that's what I have done. The CDs are a set of them, they run the three gongs, they have a couple of minutes silence, then they have the three gongs. We've got two minute ones, three minute ones, four minute ones, five minute ones. DRS is here, take note, you can buy them, they're over there. And um, we also um, have cards. You'll see the cards coming up in a minute, but we laminated them all so that every class had four cards. Basically, it's a little prayer to begin it, and then we talk about going into silence. Right. Next one. Right. This is what I do in every meditation class I get into. The kids are sick, so and tired of it, but they know it. I say, the four S's. What are the four S's? And they tell me. Silence. Stillness. Say your word straight back. That's all you need to know about meditation. Silence, stillness, say your word straight back. Go into your classroom with your CD, silence, stillness, right. Silence, but when you pray, go into your inner room and shut the door. That is what we do in meditation. We go into our inner room, we close our eyes, which is shutting the door. And what Mother Teresa said was, silence is God speaking to us. And if you think this is not very Christian, John Paul II said, all forms of prayer are built on the foundation of silence. And I just got one a couple of days ago reading, <clears throat> and I thought, oh, that's interesting. Silence is not the absence of sound, but the presence of somebody which is not sound. Silence is not the absence of sound, but the presence of somebody which is sound. <coughs> Right, now we come to it. Stillness. Be still and know that I am God, the psalmist says. The stillness of the body helps to produce inner stillness. And we want to stop at that one. Stillness of the mind is the greatest challenge of prayer. Now you come to what this is specific about this type of meditation. In this meditation we have a saying. Meditation is not thinking. Now as teachers we spend our time telling children to think. What were you thinking of before you wrote that? Three sevens are nineteen. What are you thinking of? Did you think? You have to know about this meditation. You don't think. And as soon as you stop thinking, you have to stop thinking. And this stillness of mind is incredible. It is a great obstacle in all meditation. It is the one obstacle. Because as soon as you decide that you're going to sit still and not think of anything, you will get all these little monkeys coming into your mind. The monkeys of the mind. And before you know who you are, you're thinking of what you're going to do as soon as you get home. You must remember to pick up a bottle of milk on the way. Uh, oh Lord, I've got to mark that stuff for tomorrow. I haven't prepared this. I haven't done that. And before you know who you are, you've got a thousand little monkeys all doing the same thing. There's only one way to stop monkeys from making all that noise and chattering. And what you do is you give them a banana. You give them a banana. And that banana is one single solitary word. That's all you're allowed in meditation. One word. You can choose any word you like. I know a friend of mine, she chose relaxation. She goes relaxation. And she does that all through her meditation. You can go one, two, three, four if you feel like it. There's nothing to stop you. Some people use Abba, Father. Some people use the Jesus Prayer. Jesus have mercy. They take part of the Jesus Prayer and use it. We in the world community of Christian meditation have decided we'll use the word Maranatha. It's an Aramaic word. It appears in the Gospels. And we use four syllables. Maranatha. And from room one up to the top, they all know the Maranatha. They're Give them a big word, they love it. And they have to recite that in their heart from the beginning of the meditation to the end of the meditation. Because this meditation goes beyond words. We only allow the one word. It goes beyond images. 
I go into this class now and I say, what must you think about when you're meditating? And they usually say, Jesus, God. I say, no. Not now they don't. They say, we have to think of nothing. If Jesus comes into your mind and the meets of Jesus comes into your mind, say the word. If Our Lady comes into your mind and the meets of Our Lady, say the word. Because they're all images. Now the Buddhists who do a lot of meditation and are the kindest people on earth who won't stand on a cockroach have a saying. If you meet the Buddha on the way, then kill him. If you meet the Buddha on the journey, then kill him. The journey of enlightenment for a Buddha, he will not have any image in the way and he knows the image is the Buddha, is an image of the Buddha, not the reality. And this is the most strange thing coming from the Buddhists, but that's really what it means. It means no image is to come between you and the reality which is God. So no images. You know what usually happens when you have your prayers in the morning? The kids come out and they put down the crucifix and they put down a little statue of Our Lady and they put down a statue of the Sacred Heart and they put down this and they put down that and they put down the other. All good stuff. We all need images because of our imagination. But on meditation day, may I recommend that you only have a candle. So there are no images of anything. They are going into their own hearts to find reality. So we do not think. It's one of the great things about it. Next. Stillness of body. Be still. Stillness of body has been right. What have we got next? <coughs> Say your word. Say your word. Whatever word you have decided to do, that is the word that they say. The purpose of the mantra, of the word, is to focus the mind and protect it as far as possible from distractions. If you try to sit down and do this without a word, some, of course, you can use your breath. The Buddhists use breath. So other people use breath. They breathe, concentrate on their breathing. Breathe in, breathe out. And they concentrate on that all the time. That's all they think of. Breath in, breath out. Breath in, breath out. Okay. But we use the word. But you need something to focus on. Without focus, you'll fall asleep. If you're snoring in meditation, you've gone too deep into it. You snore, you go deep in. You have to be awake in meditation. Meditation is awareness, mindfulness. These are all things about meditation you must take in. It must be a controlling thing. It is a discipline. It is not a thing where you can go sit gently on a chair and fall fast asleep. I've done it plenty of times. So, what the mantra is, it's like an anchor. It drags your spirit deep down to the soul center of your being. Because remember, if you pray at the surface, you will live your life at the surface. If you pray in the depths, you will live your life in the depths and out of the depths. So the mantra is the word we use, but you don't have to use it. You can pick any word you like, but it's nice four-syllable letter. And the meaning of it, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. But again, you don't need that because you're not going to cogitate. This is not discursive meditation. You're not going to think, ah, Maranatha. Now that means come Lord Jesus. Ah, yes, yeah, I'll have a thought about that. Whole. You just say the word. Next one, distractions. As soon as you attempt to meditate, distractions appear. Simply return to the mantra when you realize you're being distracted. Distractions will never disappear, never. But over time, their power to distract will lessen. You know that thing about there are two things in life you cannot avoid? One being death and the other being taxes. Death and taxes. In the 16th century, St. Teresa of Avila said, there are two things in life we cannot avoid. One is death, and the other is distractions. Now, she was the great mystic of the 16th century, but as she's telling you, you will always have it. She said, distractions, the wandering mind, are part of the human condition, and can no more be avoided than eating or sleeping. No more be avoided than eating or sleeping. So you will always have distractions.